It is another episode of Offstage with Ward Anderson, celebrating three seasons. Welcome. I am your host, yours truly. Today, we're going to be talking about women on screen. I uh, am lucky to have with me here five very talented women, <laughs> all of whom are yeah. unlucky enough to call me a friend. <laughs> right here, sitting to my right, she is a very talented writer, director, and actress, and her name is Kate Drummond. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> this is where I say something, right? <laughs> Hello! That works. Nice. Great! Perfect. <laughs> Nailed it. Great. A very talented actress you've seen in such movies as X-Men Apocalypse. Her name is Carolina Barczyk. Oh. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> she is a writer and director and documentary filmmaker. She is also one of the organizers of the Breakthroughs Film Festival, a film festival celebrating short films by emerging female directors. Mm -hmm. And her name is Hannah Donegan. Woo! Thanks for having me. Very talented actress. She is also a member of the media in a very unique way. One of the celebrated hosts of The Naked News. Please welcome Kat Curtis. <laughs> She is a fashion and style expert. She is also one of Canada's <laughs> busiest weather presenters from CP24, the always lovely Patricia Jagernoff. Thank you. How about the high pressure? Maybe some low pressure today, we'll see. Low pressure to go with the high pressure? You know it. Just gotta have the balance. And I want to thank you. I'm going to toast you right away. Congratulations to Patricia on keeping this from becoming the whitest episode ah, we've yeah, ever that's shot. I'm going to bring some chocolate up in here. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, Can we drink this? Yeah, that's, it's yours. Drink it. You didn't drink. That's oh, bad luck. Okay. All right. There you go. Good luck's back. There we go. <laughs> um, I know each of you. I've, I've gotten to, to talk to each of you at different times in your careers and your lives. Um, let's talk about women on screen. Let's talk about it. Um, <laughs> Where do we begin? Yeah. 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 Well, I'll tell you this. You ready? Broad topic. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's why I pause there. Here's why I pause there. Because you're all doing really well. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. That puts you in the top 1% of women in the industry. Yeah. Cool. So, oh, before you. doing this interview today. I don't today, know if that's a congratulations or that's <laughs> accompanied by the funeral march. Like, that's really depressing. Yeah. Uh, hmm. It's uh, when I sat down to do this today and, and do this episode, I started going through the numbers and looking up things. And it seems that every year, at the end of the year, we look back and we go, well, here's how women did this year in insert industry here, this hmm. blank, right? When I started looking at women on screen, um, it's interesting because it's always baby steps. It's always baby steps, right? Every time I go, oh, women are doing really well. They're doing better. Mm -hmm. We hear better, and we think that must mean doing well. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily doing well just because it's doing better, right? We're also doing worse. Mm -hmm. In many ways, you are doing worse. 51% of the population is female. But on top of that, 51 to 52% of the, of the moving buying public is female. Mm -hmm. Women buy more movie tickets than men do, mm -hmm. right? And yet, it's fewer parts are going to women now. Mm -hmm. Women are actually appearing on screen less than they were just five years ago, yep. not more. So you're hovering, despite the fact being 51% of the population and being 52% or so, or 51% of the movie buying or ticket buying public, you guys are looking at always around 20%, and never really higher than 20 or 30%, depending on what you do. Mm -hmm. On screen, as far as on screen goes, women make up about 30% of what you see on screen. Mm -hmm. That's right? movies. movies. That's movies, that's television. Television as well. Now here's one place where you're lucky, 50%. As far as, you know, you do the weather, yes. but you also are an uh, on-air anchor and reporter mm -hmm. for the news, mm -hmm. right? 50% is female. Yeah, it's, I could tell it's a little bit different because even at CP24, I mean, when you talk about diversity, there's every shape, every color, every age is at CP24. But as far as it comes to women, I think there's more women in our newsroom than mm -hmm. there are men. And the men kind of feel like, too much estrogens in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's really, to get that's really rad. Yeah. Uh, in the documentary film world, it's kind of similar. similar. A lot of the broadcasters I deal with are women. A lot of the commissioning editors are women. A it's lot amazing. of the producers that I meet who are out hustling, they're women. In my mm -hmm. office, 
we are like six women to one dude. That's it. <laughs> and he, and I I feel like this is a world that I need to immerse myself in, mm -hmm. and I'm happy to immerse myself in because I have so many people to look ahead of me and look up Amazing. to. I have people who support me, and I. It's, it's been a much different experience than when I work outside of the documentary world. It's often very male-centered. Mm -hmm. And I often end up playing on set behind the scenes. I play some sort of woman role. Mm -hmm. I'm always talking mm -hmm. someone off a ledge. Mm -hmm. I'm always reining people in. Mm -hmm. I'm always You're having make, to do all the emotional labor. I'm, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I make sure everyone it feels comfortable enough to do their job, which is really not the job that I was hoping to do. Mm -hmm. Versus in the documentary world, when I'm working around women, I mean, this is personal experience, not trying to generalize, but I rarely have to put in that emotional labor and I always feel like I get it back. I always feel like whatever I put in, I'm gonna get back. Well, I've got some stats for you. I'd like to hear them. You're a director. Yeah. You're a director as well. Um, you know, each of you here has worked behind the camera in some capacity yeah. at some point. Uh, you've been a jack of all trades or a Joan of all trades. I don't know what you say with that. Right? A Jill of all Make trades. Make sure you put her in a box, though. Right. But you've, female box. you've done everything from directing to, to editing to everything. But mm -hmm. here's something for you. Ready? Documentary filmmakers, it's pretty good. Women are doing pretty good as far as uh, documentary filmmakers go. So 30% of people on screen are women. Then you get lower. Producers, less than 20%. Mm. Writers, less than 15%. Mm. Directors, oh. less than 7%. Wow. Right? So now I've got something yeah. for you. Yeah. 50% of your industry is women. Mm -hmm. How many, what percentage of women over the age of 50 are anchors on screen presenting like you do now? Do you know what it is? In the CTV family, there's probably pff, it's less than 10%, mm. most likely. It's around 5%. Is it 5? Yeah. It's going to go with 5. Wow. And it's right? interesting thing, reading about this, it turns out that when you look at on screen news, mm -hmm. Men in the media, the gray hair is a sign of yeah. stature. It's, a, it's <laughs> yeah. a sign of, look, this guy's, he's aged into this part. He's, mm -hmm. he's gotten wizened, you know? Mm. Whereas the older women get in media, not just on film, but media, the more they're pushed out. Does that surprise you guys to find that out? Zero. No. 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 <laughs> the, way, the way a woman looks comes to my mind. The way yeah. a man looks as he, get older, as he gets older, I don't think is judged. The way we look, remember earlier we were saying, oh, about age and whatnot, and not only do we have to feel the pressures of getting older, being in our 30s, young 30s, uh, mm -hmm. but then you start to look, you start to age, and it's telling on 4K, HD, all this, and you get mm -hmm. pushed out as a woman. A woman's currency is her age, unfortunately, yeah. and that's nothing that we can, we can't stop that. Whereas a man well, can, not? that his, well, we can't. his stock rises as he gets older. Yeah, yeah. Especially well, on, I, on screen. Women do post 50, yeah. a lot of times uh, in the media tend to move behind the scenes. Yeah. So there may be Done. work there, but on screen it definitely... Well, that's why they move behind it. the scenes. Because they, they, they have to. They have no choice. Yeah. If they want to stay in their business that they've worked their entire lives mm -hmm. to build a career, mm -hmm. they move behind the camera. I unless you, unless you take this. on, you know, mm -hmm. you take on, look at someone like Lake Bell, right, who mm -hmm. writes, produces, directs, and creates her own content, right? Mm -hmm. And I think as women, we have this really unfortunate thing that we're facing, which is the fact that as we age, I mean, I think I'm the oldest one here in my 40s. Um, right. <laughs> but it's sort of a, you know, as we, as we age, our, it's funny because our, our experiences are richer mm -hmm. in our life. Our ability to tell authentic stories is deeper. Yeah. And yet our, our opportunities coming from outside sources seem to go down, which I think is why women need to come together and start, you know, and, and create these stories that are for the women that are mm -hmm. aging, that do have a richer story to tell. Yeah. There's um, an interesting stat there. So you're a writer and director, yeah. okay? So that small percentage of women who direct, a lot of times it turns out they're directing because that's what they have to do to get their project made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That they're directing sometimes themselves in their right. own project that somebody decided they're too old to do right. or too overweight to do yeah. or to insert this here to do, <laughs> right. right? So a lot of the writers and directors out there that are women, 
a lot of the things that they're producing are the projects that they have to be producing mm -hmm. themselves to get made, mm -hmm. right? I got another interesting stat for you guys oh, before we Fall move on to each of you. <laughs> Here's one for you. This one was what surprised me. So turns out, uh, I already said the majority of roles out there are for men. Mm -hmm. Majority of protagonists are men. Majority of mm -hmm. leads are men. Mm -hmm. When two women are on screen at the same time and there's not a man on screen, guess what they're talking about a majority of the time? It's men. men. Yeah. They're failing the Bechdel test. Yeah. 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 There's a great screening series in Toronto called Bechdel Tested, and they feature in one movie a month, like The Royal or The Review, mm -hmm. that passes the Bechdel mm -hmm. test. Tell everybody, what tell everybody what the Bechdel test is. I'll let you go ahead. Oh, it's basically if a woman is on screen for more than a certain amount of scenes or seconds, mm -hmm. and if while on screen they're not talking about men, then it passes the Bechdel it's, test. It's literally not a even how long. A woman on screen talking. A woman on screen talking. Or two women on screen talking to each other. Not about a man. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's literally two women talking to each other, each other. not about a man. And, and I think 80% nice. of, I was looking at what movies failed. The entire Lord of the Rings trilogy failed. Mm -hmm. All the Harry Potters failed, except for one. Pulp Fiction failed, like oh, okay. all the biggest movies we've ever watched. Oh, all the Star Wars as well. So that's mm -hmm. what we think about women talking to there each other. There are so wow. few female characters in Star Wars. Mm -hmm. yeah. The thing that bothers me is, yes, there are so, many, there are so few female protagonists, but there are situations where women aren't even allowed to play themselves. In situations with trans women, it's usually a cisgendered male playing a trans woman. Yeah. There are so many trans women actors that are not getting work, and mm -hmm. cisgendered males are, are getting their roles. Well, and, and uh, how many times have we seen a movie about a gay character, and it's a famously straight actor playing the gay character, yeah. mm -hmm. right? I mean, I would say probably nine times out of ten that's the case, right? And, and played for accolades. Look, this person played gay. Right, so I, I find that the most interesting thing when I started reading about this, that when women are on screen, nine, you know, a majority of the time, that if there's two women on screen, they're talking about the main man in the movie. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, if you take women in film in general, the objective of the woman in a film almost always is a man. But that's actually the ultimate goal of a woman in a movie. And that can include Horror movies, action movies, rom-coms, what have you, the ultimate goal for a woman in many movies is a man, right? Well, we're all Princess Peaches, right? Right. We're all the trophy. Yeah. That's, that's our role. We're all the object for the, the protagonist to get. We're the reward at the end. Mm -hmm. And I think um, that's really, really damaging because you get into situations where men feel because the media has told them that they are owed a woman, that they are owed a woman, and that's when rape culture happens. That's when things like Elliot Roger happens. Like, mm -hmm. they, they think that niceness is, you know, a little machine that they can just put but tokens in and There are female empowerment out. roles, though, as well, like Halle Berry being Storm, mm -hmm. like, as a sure. superhero. Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like to see both sides. I look at life, you know, with the glass half full, not half empty. And I know that you're throwing these stats out here. Mm -hmm. Being from Toronto, though, I've seen a lot of women even get men role, male roles. Sure. They walk into that audition mm -hmm. room and there's like 50-50, let's say, this is the audition room. And you don't even know which way it's going to go because maybe the writer or the director or the producer has no idea himself or herself mm -hmm. what sex is going to fill that role, kind of tastes it. And then a woman ends up getting it. But the stats are the stats. I, you can't argue that, though. Yeah, and I actually want to bring up the, the Wonder Woman issue because mm -hmm. this is the first time that we are having a female superhero movie. And in the trailer, it's mostly Steve Trevor. <laughs> Very little Wonder Woman. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, um, i tell you the stats just to tell you the reality. I do think it's getting better. Yeah. But it's like I said, it's, it's baby steps. It's so. not getting better. Well, this year, it's gotten worse. So it's not getting better. Worse as in? The stats are that less women directed, less women in, in roles, west, less writers, less producers. From the year before. Mm -hmm. Is that from the year before? Right, yeah. right. So it's, it's not getting better. And also, if, we're not, if we don't have directors and writers and producers who are women, we have people who aren't writing genuine 
women roles. Well, I'm mm -hmm. glad you said that because this is something I've noticed before. I will say this. Here's another little stat for you. Uh, one place where women are rare in film is as the villains. That's actually yeah. gone down. Women used to be villains more than they are now. But when they <laughs> are villains or the bad guy in a movie, it's because the protagonist is also a woman. Mm -hmm. hmm. And I think, I don't know, but I think this is because a lot of this is written by men. Mm -hmm. So when men write a male character, they don't put the villain as a woman. But when they write a female lead, mm -hmm. that's when they write the villain as a woman. Mm -hmm. right? One thing that I can't stand, I've talked about this for a long time. You and I have talked about this before, and I've talked to you about it. One thing that always bothered me, and, and, I, and I'm not going to sit here and pretend I'm an expert on writing women or what that's like, but one thing that's always bothered me is when I watch a movie and people write business women. Business women, CEOs, someone like that, I go, for some reason someone has decided powerful business woman is bitch. Mm -hmm. It's got to be the woman that walks in too busy with her cup. Hey, get so and so on the phone. With this coffee's cold. Get this out of here. Get in here. We got to mm -hmm. do. And I go, you would never write a man that way. That would be considered that guy's an a hole. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you're writing him as a jerk, right? Yeah. But for some reason, in order to show a woman who's a CEO, she has to be cold. And she must hate children. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like there's women who love their job and love their family as well sure. like we can have yeah. like those two things can go together. and have friends <laughs> and have yeah. friends yeah love them. <laughs> several well. of the several of the people here have met my wife mm -hmm. my wife's a successful advertising executive one of the nicest people you'll ever meet yeah. she's never had to be a jerk to get ahead in her mm -hmm. business she's never had to be mean or or, or an asshole in order to succeed yeah. so I, i've always found that weird that why are we still writing the ceo as you know, the, the female CEO is the jerk. Or, or it, it doesn't even have to be that. It could be the district attorney, right, mm -hmm. who's cold and mean. Or, you well, know. as the only male here, what do you think? You know, I, I think it's, um, there's a lot of, we all know, there's a lot of easy writer tropes out there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably just an easy one that people fall back on, yeah, totally. right? It's, we can, well, we can go on and on about those. We can, the, the damsel in distress, the flamboyantly gay best friend, mm -hmm. the... You know, the, 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 the sassy old lady, yeah. right? It so. boils down to um, women in power in uh, fictional, in fiction, are not allowed to be women. Like, if you look a lot at, at a lot of the female superheroes, they're not given much dimension. Most female superheroes or most female cops are, you know, hard and tough, and <laughs> there's that, ex that really, really rough exterior, and then when you get to the squishy inside it's all girl but they don't yeah. they don't show their femininity they don't embrace it i don't agree because with it, totally in that no i've seen like halle berry curves on curves Wonder i'm not talking about um i'm not talking about uh the way they look i'm talking about the way that they act right They're, they don't act loving they don't act um Soft. They don't I see this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I, I talk a lot. I apologize. I'm not trying to talk over. No, you. Don't worry. I'm the dragon um, off. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> um, see? They're they're Villains. supposed to be hard and mm. yeah. tough and not display their femininity because apparently femininity does not equal strength in film, and that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see a woman cop on screen who I'm not led to believe is going to be chasing bad guys wearing six inch heels <laughs> yeah i can't tell you how many times i've watched a movie where i go that's a very impractical outfit for a detective <laughs> to be wearing i have to I, i'd love to elaborate on this sort of notion of the the hard exterior um and there's a character that i play in uh, a series called winona earp and i play Lakato, agent Lakato, who is like the she is the villain mm -hmm. basically so to speak she's the the hard ass she's the um you know the one who comes in and is cold, nobody likes her, everyone's giving, rolling their eyes behind her back, you know, I never really engage with anyone in a scene because everyone's ignoring me because everyone hates me. Oh. Fast forward to having a female director for the first time. And I say to this, I say to, her name is April Mullen, if anyone knows her, she's yeah. incredible. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just so in awe of working with her. She says to me, I'd like to go deeper. I'd like to find the humanity, the vulnerability of this character. And I, I was, I was so, felt so respected as a woman, as an artist, mm -hmm. as this person who I signed on to take this role when I auditioned. It was, she's this, she's a cow, 
she has no oh, friends, geez. you know, basically this is, and I went in and because of my physical look and the strength I have, um, it's an easy cast. Mm -hmm. But there's also, you know, like we we're talking about, we don't re often get that opportunity to dig deeper and be ourselves. And, and Kate, the person, yes, is very strong and has a, has a sort of, I can take on the world exterior, but the inside is very much my truth as well, which is my heart and my love and my humanity and my fears. And, and it's so nice to be able to have that in a role, but it was a female director. Mm -hmm. that and that true. is yeah. what we need. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and but good on her. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely true. And, yeah. and look, some of this absolutely is sexist. Some of it is absolutely sexism at play. And then some of it is latent. Some of it is, is not intentional. You know, directors often take people under their wings and that's who comes up as the next directors. Right. And a lot of times people take under their wings people like them. Right. So male directors end up mentoring young male directors, mm -hmm. you know, and, yeah. and as, a, as a female director, I know that you look to mentor younger directors. I do, yeah. Know? But I mean, you know, sexism, just like racism, it's systemic, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't necessarily latent. mean to outwardly exclude women from being directors, but we just prefer hiring and working with other men. And it's yeah. a case-by-case -case basis that is unfortunately duplicated all across the board, all across the country, all across the continent, and then even further on to other continents. You know, we don't have drastically low standards compared to Europe. We're relatively on par, you know? There's, there's interesting things I find myself doing and learning as I get older. Having daughters helps, having a daughter helps that. Um, you know, I have a, a radio show where I have a female co-host that helps me learn, you know. But like, for instance, when I introduced you all, I talked about, you know, five very talented people. But my inclination was to go five very talented, very beautiful women. women yeah. mm -hmm. Right? Um, and, and although that's true, and no one here would be insulted by that, why is that important? You know, I would never introduce five men as five very attractive, handsome men <laughs> that I interview. And I've done that. I've, I've interviewed men on here and not had to say that, right? But yet, it's just, that's my inclination. That's my habit. That's the way I've always talked. And no one would consider it an insult, but I'm just saying, look at how that was my impulse to say that with five women that I'm interviewing. Are you talking about the saying that they're they're beautiful and ta the beautiful part, mm -hmm. or are you talking about the fact that you're calling them women instead of people? No, beautiful. Okay. When I introduced all of you, I mm -hmm. almost said five very talented, beautiful women. I said five talented women, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But the habit is to go to very talented, the very beautiful Look. Kay Drummond, mm -hmm. right. right? It's to go right to the appearance. But I've interviewed actors and not felt the need to go, the very talented, the very handsome. That's okay. Yeah. Right? Maybe you should change that. Maybe that should be the thing that you do. Maybe yeah. start, start calling Start sexualizing men. the dudes. Okay. I like it. Call the men, call the men handsome more mm -hmm. often, right? Yeah. But, I, but this is what I mean by it's, it's a type of latent sexism that's not, it's not um, harmful or it's not, you know, uh, malicious or anything like that. Mm -hmm. but, no, it's but, very ingrained and yeah. like women use it too. We know it's a currency, you know. But, we know we can get things with it. We know that we're more likely to get certain roles. We're more likely to get certain jobs. That sometimes we have to uh, present certain ways in order mm -hmm. to get what we want out of it. We're not, I mean, I'm not dumb to the fact that uh, youth and beauty are currency in our society and that using it can get you something and mm -hmm. can get you somewhere. Mm -hmm. And personally, I like to play with that in a very head-on way. Um, but we do it a million different ways passively as well. And I don't think that's women being villains, which it often mm -hmm. is portrayed as. Like if you think you're you know, using your looks to get you something or using your flirt to get you something that that's some, somehow villainous, but it's not because we didn't set that standard, you no. know? That's often the only way to nudge yourself into a conversation, into a space that's often dominated by men, mm -hmm. uh, the only way to get noticed, the only way to grab people's attention and to get people to look at you and listen to you. It's bullshit. I mean, bull, no, that's whatever. <laughs> uh, but you know, we work with the resources that we have. Sure. And that would totally speak to the statistics about your industry where yeah. your youth is definitely uh, like a huge reason why plus you, yeah. yeah, plus your 
you're gorgeous, everything, uh, you get to be on screen, you know? You play to that too, because trust me, if I went to my first, uh, you know, meeting, audition, interview at CP24 with no makeup, not a cute outfit, my personality would still come through, but this was just the icing on the cake, you know what I mean? I want to go in there and seal the deal. Yeah. And why can't I? No. If you have it, yeah. it right? Can I just make a point about something you said that, you know, it, it isn't something that you're, if you were to say beautiful women, it, it is all latent sexism, but don't you think that's so dangerous when it's so under the surface and it's so systemic? If people were outwardly because, sexist, mm -hmm. it's easy to be like, don't do that. Mm -hmm. But because it's so latent, we can go 20 years without <laughs> anything changing in the film industry. Because nobody realizes they're doing it. Yeah, because no one's realizing yeah. it. And when you point it out, they say, you're overreacting. Mm -hmm. See, that's why I'm, I'm comfortable with what I do. I'm naked on camera. I am selling a program that marries sexuality with, um, you know, information. But it's very blatant. It's very out there. I know what I'm getting into. Mm -hmm. um, I'm comfortable with it. I am providing a service that is very clearly what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's situations like Fox News and their leg cams where that's more insidious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is where it's, it's no longer empowering because it is taking the power away from the person because they're not going in there with, a f with the full information of this is what you are presenting. Mm -hmm. This is what you are selling. Mm -hmm. I'll yeah. tell you a little irony here. Please. Okay, so you work for the Naked News. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, naked infotainment, we can call it, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it gets lumped into the adult industry, mm -hmm. adult entertainment or whatever. But here's some irony for you. The adult entertainment industry has some of the most, uh, has the most female directors, female editors, has some of the most women working behind the scenes. Wow. That's very strange. <laughs> yeah. And yet You'd it's think true. Men really, would really want that job. Yeah. <laughs> but it's true. Well, it's more important yeah. to hire female directors in a situation like that because it's mm -hmm. it's a safety and security yeah. issue. Yeah. You, you work with a lot of women, and not just on mm -hmm. camera. You work with a lot of women yeah, behind absolutely. the camera as well. And, I mean, I work for Naked News, but they have been very keen on promoting me and making sure to foster my career and too. giving me opportunities and they're willing to do that to any anchor who comes in and um, they've been they've been really good about helping lift me up which you wouldn't think from something like Naked News because the idea seems very misogynistic but at the end of the day like I, we're selling a program we're selling a very specific program and it does what it's meant to do now I will say this uh, as a quick aside on that what restaurant chain employs the most women? Hooters. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean as, as uh, staff, I mean as management. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More female managers, Great. well, because women come up, right? From, they, they promote oh, from sure. within, right? Mm -hmm. So, but now, back to nudity. Mm -hmm. Here's something I've also noticed that's really interesting. Um, when a man gets naked mm -hmm. on camera, we have a couple of things that we do. First of all, we call him brave. <laughs> He's always brave, uh, unless it's a unless it's a bum shot. You know, if it's the ass shot, it's either played for laughs or it's played for that getting up and walking away from the bed. Mm -hmm. Right? You see the man walk away. Yeah. There's his naked bum. Yeah. Right? But if it's full frontal, it doesn't matter who it is. It's always that was brave. Mm -hmm. That was brave. We do call women brave when they're naked too. We call them other things too. <laughs> but we call them exactly. we call them brave. I've found when it's women of a certain age. Mm -hmm. Or or women plus of a certain size, size. Yes, exactly. And I mean Heather Graham is probably one of the most beautiful humans out there. And I think it's really insulting to call her brave because she doesn't have to feel brave about showing her body because there's there should be nothing scary about showing her curves. They're perfect. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that, it is something I notice when it comes to nudity. Here's something I know a lot of you already know. Um, a woman naked on screen, very common. A man naked on screen, very uncommon. Mm -hmm. But not only that, a man naked on screen instantly changes the ratings. It instantly... Do better. Do better or worse? No, as in it makes it more of a restricted movie to see. Oh, mm -hmm. oh there's a man naked on screen. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, really? But not if there's a woman naked. Not if there's a woman naked. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> also. I just saw you bury anger. I just watched <laughs> that yeah. happen. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> well, so, yeah. Just like a movie is more restricted if a man is depicted going down on a woman. Right. But not if a woman is seen going down on a man. I've wow. heard that mm -hmm. one before. Right. <sighs> Women are, they're not allowed sexuality in some ways, but they are, there's a certain amount of sexuality that's also expected of them. Mm -hmm. Like they, you we have to We are willing, basically they're willing dolls. So we are not allowed to have our own sexuality. We are allowed to have the sexuality that is projected upon us. Yeah, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> it's funny, th that's another thing. Um, uh, you, of course, are a gay filmmaker. You're pansexual. This is something else. I've noticed that when it comes to gay women on screen, we have two things. We have it played, uh, it's either played uh, as a stereotype, an angry, you know, there's the angry or, excuse me, butch lesbian character, <laughs> or it's played for titillation. I've noticed that. You know, the, 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 the hot lesbians there to turn on the male viewer and everything like that. You know, I mean, and this is, and we've talked about this on other episodes, but just like with gay men, still there's the stereotypical flamboyant gay friend, mm. right? Who's played for laughter, right? Yeah, as a, totally. you know, it's, it's, there's still those stereotypes as well. So now you're dealing with not just, you know, the, the latent sexism or whatever, but also how people view uh, gay characters on screen. Yeah, I mean, I think it also comes back to who's making the film. Yes. It's, and it's, you sure. know, often straight white men. So they see, especially gay women on screen, yeah, it's something we get to take a moment and just look at. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't get to have depth um, and yeah. dimension, you mm -hmm. know? Um, By the way, two men kissing also automatically changes the restriction of the movie. Really? Yeah. That one I didn't if know. It's, but not if, it's, two if it's passionate, but not two women. Not two women. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Shocker. Huh? Um, I have good news uh, when we want to move on to the good news. Let's do that. I <laughs> so moving on. I'm ready. I do, I do want to say this, though. Okay. Before we move on to the perfect good news, I do want to say something. When I talked about, you know, the, the good thing, you guys all being successful, I will say, in a lot of ways, you guys, everybody here kind of bucks the trend a little bit because you got into the industry over 30. I, yeah, I, uh, I only started acting at 30 and I only came to Toronto professionally at 35. Yep. I had, a, and actually I had a, when I was searching for an agent, I um, had a man agent tell me that at 35 I was, in his words, too old to dream Whoa. of being a movie star and then he called me honey. Mm. Oh no. That's and cute. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and I thought, wow, you know, I have two university degrees and a 12-year career in the elementary school teaching and I have a life that I've lived and you're talking to me like I'm a, you know, a 13-year-old with a crush on Kirk Cameron and starry-eyed, you know, like it was just really, it was condescending, it was, um, <laughs> I, I literally was dumbfounded. I wish, I wish now at 41 uh, I could go back and have words. You can. Um, I can. It's not. It's not worth my time. You don't need to. Because yeah. what I need yeah. to do is I need to. I need to change how I behave in the world, uh -huh. in my world, uh -huh. and in my my art in my life are are very meshed, That's right? It. Yeah. It's, it's got to. Let your success be your words. It's. Don't I don't need to prove yeah. to him. Yeah. But it was really mm -hmm. interesting because mm -hmm. speaking of bucking the system, he was wrong. Hmm. Of course he's wrong. He was wrong. Well, I, I mean, for all intents and purposes, I... He was I, wrong I and right. He was wrong and right. I mean, women over 40 barely exist on screen. Mm -hmm. Women over 50, even less. Women over 60. So he wasn't... I'm not saying he was... He was, he was wrong and right. Like, it's a horrible thing to say. He and was I wrong wish, about Kate. He wasn't wrong about the business. That's the way the mm -hmm. business is. Yeah. And yeah. you're an amazing actor, and you're, you're tenacious, and I'm sure you've, like, heard no a hundred thousand times. Oh. But that is... That is the problem: is that women are become so rich with, uh, you know, who they are by the time they're forty and fifty. But that's not that's not interesting for mm -hmm. the filmmakers that are making films right now. We're also not as pliable. We're, well, we we stand up for what we believe in. We're not twenty-one that makes years us old. And yeah, it's, mm -hmm. 
So he wasn't wrong, but I'm so glad that you did not listen to this yeah. person. Mm -hmm. You know, and you and continue to live your life and, and yeah. do what you want to do. That's important. I think that's I think that's I think it's an important lesson for everyone. I think it's just you don't take no for an sure. answer. Ever. Uh, I mean, if you want to if you want to affect change and you want to see something that you're passionate about take on a different shape, mm -hmm. then no matter what gets thrown in your face, you can say no. Yeah. No, thank you. No, I'm not taking that role where you're going to shove me in a meat locker and kill me because I have a certain look and I'm the trophy wife that is, you know, half clothed or whatever. I'm sorry. Women in refrigerator syndrome. I'm not taking that role. <laughs> I've been murdered so many times. <laughs> yeah. you know? It's kind of your thing. Yeah, I die all you're the good, time. You're a good victim. Yeah. yeah. You're like Lady Sean Bean. Like who? Lady Sean Bean. Yeah. Sean Bean yeah. gets killed a lot. Yeah, I get killed a lot. But Carolina, you didn't uh, get into acting either until your 30s. Yeah, right? I got, I got, I had lived an entire life before and had many interesting careers and pursued other things and then decided that I, I, w I didn't know how hard it was going to be, and I also didn't want I, I didn't want to know how hard it was going to be because I didn't want it to deter me. I just wanted to do it. And there's so many other things that I'm passionate about, but this just happens to be the number one passion. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so maybe I won't stay. Won't, maybe I won't be an actor forever, but you know, this is what I am doing right now, and I'm so passionate about seeing more women on screen because I really think it can make a difference on our planet. It, like mm -hmm. it enters people's subconscious and it changes people's minds and. Um, yes, yeah, so this is where I'm at right now. What's the good news? Oh, I have some good news. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, you just so, saved a ton of car interest. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes, reading all the stats online is so depressing and it just fuels so much anger inside of me. But um, five years ago, Sweden did this really amazing thing where they said that 50% of uh, film funding goes to females. Mm -hmm. And so it in turns Sweden. out, yeah, in Sweden, it turns out women have like really interesting things to say. And it turns out not all white guys <laughs> have really interesting things to say. <laughs> <laughs> and now they took out the rule and it's still 50 50 because yeah. now it's entered into their subconscious that women yeah. ca are capable of making films. And the better news is that Canada is doing the same mm -hmm. thing. Canada is following suit. Telefilm yeah. has to fund 50% of projects to female writers, female directors which I think will then translate into seeing more women on screen and, uh, screen and, and richer characters, and richer characters for men as well. Uh, this is a good thing for men, too. For the people that don't know what Telefilm is. <clears throat> oh, Telefilm is a funding body in mm -hmm. Canada to, film, uh, to fund making feature films and uh, short films and I think TV shows, but I'm not sure. And that's the yeah. thing. It's not about pushing male stories out, like you said. Yeah. It's yeah. not about saying, well, there's room for everybody. we don't want that. We want this. And get out of the way. It's women taking over the world. It's not, I don't think that's, there's that's what room we're for everybody. Seeking. If you're 51% of the population, yeah. you can be making 51% of the product. Also, if my tax dollars are going to be making films, I want 50% of those to be about women or made by women. Like, we deserve to have that. Mm -hmm. We pay taxes. Therefore, we should get to see more movies that represent us. Hannah, mm -hmm. you are one of the organizers of the Breakthroughs Film Festival. I am. Right? And this features exclusively female directors. Yeah. What's okay. the biggest challenge there? Well, funding is always the biggest challenge. Yeah. Uh, it's often first-time filmmakers. We feature emerging female directors only. We're like a springboard platform. Um, and most of the films that we get are self-funded, like you were saying. Uh, but an insane amount of very talented directors telling very interesting stories. And for some of them, it's their first time, maybe second time, doing a short. And they are all impressive. Even the ones that you can tell they did it with just a budget to feed people pizza. Like, <laughs> they still have some sort of, uh, you know, really touching guts to them or really intense guts to them, depending on whether or not they're going genre. Um, but you also see kind of this, like, poofed feathers syndrome where, you know, they feel like they have to really show their chops. And uh, this is just a side note for any young filmmakers out there. 
There are a lot of short films where someone has died, someone is dying, someone is mourning, and someone is heartbroken about something because that's a way to show you are capable of expressing emotion, but that's really not the only way. And you can only show an audience so much about tragedy and death before you've just ruined a whole room full of people. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you said that. At that point, there's, that's its own film festival. Well, like the Bring Your Tissues film <laughs> festival. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because when I was in university and I took film classes, one of the things that always killed me was I said, it's such a film student thing to decide that the main character has to die at the end. And there was a, there was, and it's just, it, I said it became a point where I was just like, I get it. He's going to die, no matter what it was. It could be... Uh, it's uh, like the black person in the film. You always know if there's one black person in the film, he's going to die for yeah, <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but if it's a film student, if it's a film student movie, yeah. then it's every character in the movie, yeah. black or otherwise. It was, and a few years ago, uh, I actually wrote an article about uh, called, Hey Hollywood, Stop Depressing Me. <laughs> and it was just like this one award season where the main character of every movie was dying at the end, where I went, am I back in film school watching <laughs> this? Like, okay, you know, every once in a while, it's okay. The guy can live. Yeah. You know what? The, but the two George women having the conversation, one of them doesn't have to have cancer. Like, it's, yeah. it's possible, you know, it's possible that, you know, two women on screen, one doesn't have to have lupus. Right. And they could, you know, maybe live happily ever yeah. after. Welcome to the sunset. Yeah, I mean, comedy is very hard, obviously, and often sure. it's more difficult and more challenging than the emotional films. Uh, but we are slowly, over the past couple of years, I've noticed more genre films being submitted, but mm. less than 5% of the films we get by young female directors would fall into any genre category, and that has probably 90% to do with the fact that women don't work in genre, because women aren't hired in sure. genre, there's no job prospects, there's no one to look up to, no filmmaker to be like, you know, this really great... Yeah. I don't know, action. It happens every once it happens moment. every once in a while. Every once know. in a while, but just not enough. And that's where all the money is, right? The money is in genre. I do want to point out that Kate wrote and directed a movie that does not feature a man as the ultimate goal at the end of the movie. Oh, and uh, does you. not feature <laughs> scenes of women sitting around talking about the man. You should get on that Bechdel test. So. No, it does <laughs> not. No. In fact the main goal is a boat. Oh. Oh. It's a unicorn paddle boat. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> what is it called? So, it's called Go Fish. Okay. Oh, very nice. Wait, I have a question to you people. Um, <laughs> do you think, I've challenged Now Magazine to add a Bechdel rating. And that's a Toronto area. Uh, a, tur a Toronto area newspaper, mm. quite liberal, all about the arts and entertainment and mm. films. And I've asked them, like, why not do a Bechdel rating? I know the Bechdel test is not a foolproof test in any way but why not start highlighting which films pass the Bechdel test or not and they've completely they ignored me ignored your email yeah <laughs> see, I think it'd be I think it'd be fun just to read I mean I mean even yeah, I mean totally. it makes you angry I understand yeah. at the same time it's very interesting yeah it is fascinating for me to go back and look at movies and see this this the Bechdel test like we were talking mm. about which is if two women are on screen they're probably talking about a man I I mean, and yeah, it's probably because I am a man, but I never noticed this. I didn't notice this. Now I see it all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, once I, once I was made aware it's of it, it, I started to notice it constantly. Right? See, and and that is how ingrained this is because until it was brought to my attention, I never noticed it. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Because you're on Naked News. Mm -hmm. I know you want to get out, you want to act more, and you do get out and you do try to, to audition and do other roles. I mean, you're very busy. Mm -hmm. But do people now expect you to always get naked? Is, are those the roles you get? Because I, I do know a lot of actresses say that once they've gotten naked, then it becomes, that's, that's what everyone wants. Once you've been killed on screen, you get killed on screen a lot, right? I, I, I'm not complaining. I like dying. It's <laughs> <laughs> um, really fun. <laughs> well, I'm... I'm going <laughs> to just put a pin in that there and say that I don't necessarily want to get out of Naked News. I just like to diversify. Well, I do like sure. my job. Um, but when I mean, it comes but, but to, that's that job. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean you want to do that with every job. Um, right? When it comes to other roles, almost every role I get is a naked role mm -hmm. because there are so few um, women actresses who actually w want to do that because it is a death knell for your career. If you do a naked role, that is, you're the naked girl. I'm very comfortable with nudity. I enjoy 
being naked on screen. Um, and it leads to some pretty interesting roles. So I actually, I enjoy it. Like I'm, my ultimate goal isn't to break through in the world of acting, it's to write. That's what I want to do with my life. And I want to tell stories for women. So that's, that's what I want to do. And the acting is just fun for me. It's just something to do in the meantime. So I don't mind personally that all of my roles are naked. That's the corner I painted myself into. And it's a nice little bright shiny corner. Mm -hmm. So I'm, sure. I'm okay with that part. I kind of feel like we're talking about typecasting. And for myself, I'm very Would you get naked positive. on camera? No. No, Never. Thing, sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, right now, right now you work in media. Yes. But if, if the role of the lifetime came along, would you do it? Uh, no, because I'm living my dreams already. Mm. I'm good. I'm happy. Nudity on camera? Cup. Depending on what it is. I... If you're dead and naked. <laughs> no, I've done that. Oh, no. You've done the dead naked? Yeah, but it was from behind. That's the only oh, reason I agreed. Okay. Or like okay, it was so yeah. it was just showing my back. Yes. You killed from behind? No, I just never mind. I was just dead. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know. It it depends. I mean I've turned down a role where it was just gratuitous nudity. Yeah. Right. And I said I'm not interested and it was sort of I I'm had to sorry question. About that, by the way. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> no, but I mean, if it serves the story, if it authentically serves the story and needs to move it forward, I'm in this business to be a storyteller. Mm -hmm. I'm in the business for authenticity. I'm not here to hide. I'm not here to get breast implants and liposuction. And I'm here to be a 41-year-old woman with stories to tell, and I want to tell them as truthfully as I can. If that requires being naked for the role, I will talk about it. The problem with me, though, is that coming from, I have, you know, an elementary school teaching background. Right. I've done a TED Talk. Oh. And so I have kids and teenagers who reach yeah. out and who have been inspired by my shifting career and yada, yada. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to screen grab That's it. me, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. you know, that one gratuitous flash your breasts whatever and once it's is out there, there i can promise you it will always never be out i don't there. and i and that's why it has to be you know for me i just come from it i come to it from a different perspective mm -hmm. you know let's let's go to what patricia said typecasting mm -hmm. you know is that something you fear moving forward i don't fear it because i know what my brand is right. and i've really worked hard on that brand and that brand is authenticity every time you keep saying that, I'm like she should be in news <laughs> it's like a, a journalism 101 here like you tell the stories you're authentic you like truth and you just you're about the story mm -hmm. and that's what it is and being remaining unbiased but as far as it comes to being typecast I'm that happy-go-lucky girl next door very bubbly I was bullied for it now I'm making a career out of it making money's high haters uh, <laughs> overall I'm good and I just, <laughs> just want to keep I talking and storytelling and doing it on the other side of it. That's why I love when you said, can we go to the positive side of things? Yeah. Because that's where I am. And now the industry in Toronto and across the nation, coast to coast to coast, everyone's buying into it, if you, if you will. And so I'm getting hosting roles outside because I'm freelance at CP24. So my thing is I come up on the screen, I laugh, I'm bubbly, I give you the forecast, and I leave you uplifted. Then the news kind of brings you back down, right? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I love I'm not your scared. attitude. <laughs> I love how positive you are. <laughs> yep. Rules. <laughs> I'm, I'm not afraid of it miss doom and gloom so it's nice to have a balance it's good you're sitting side by side yeah, yeah. i'm gonna bring you up don't worry I'll bring you up. but that's the thing right like we can we can sit in we can choose to use our time and sit in the dismal facts mm -hmm. okay. or we can bring this this passion for what we do and what we stand for as female storytellers yes. in whatever whatever industry, job, whatever we're doing, behind the camera, in front of the camera, we can either sit behind and be dismal, or we can say, okay, listen, I'm passionate, you're passionate, you're passionate, you're passionate. How do we bring this together and move forward? Like, exactly. let's stop sitting in the, in the heap of garbage, uh, and, <laughs> and, and let's, let's get going. Yeah, we know what the facts are. We and know that you know our. We know that the, this is society. We know it's ingrained. We know we grew up this way. Mm -hmm. We knew we grew up knowing that there was a wedding that was going to be a guy and a girl walking down the aisle. We knew that this is what life looked like. Okay, this is what we grew up with. I mean, I did, anyways. Yeah. Well, okay. We now know it's not. It's it's not our 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 life. It is it is not the way it is. We need to start acting forward. That's it. Forward movement and. You know, I think the key is bringing each other out of this. For sure. This is, this is where we need feminism and this is where we need each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because 
you know, the cis white guys at the top of the heap <laughs> board, my dear, um, <laughs> they're comfortable where they are. They don't want to lift us up. No. They don't want competition. You hate her. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I love you, Ward. <laughs> you know um, what? Everybody here makes a really good point. You know what I mean? And it goes back to, we started this off with, Baby steps, yes. right? Mm -hmm. I think what we can all agree is, you know, everyone wants to keep moving forward. I want to see women moving forward. I believe that. We just got to get out of the baby steps, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, we will. And with that, thank you, panel. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Now, one last thing. Carolina, die. Ah. <laughs> Quickly. No. Uh, uh. I want to see you do it. <laughs> All right, how about a round of applause for everybody? This is Kate Drummond, Woo! Carolina Barczyk, Hannah Donegan, Kat Curtis, and Patricia Jagernock. And as always, when the show is over, we hope you join the conversation offstage. Good night.